fact, yes, actually. Um, I've often been asked this question because I have an academic background in physics as to how physics and dance comes together. Um, for many years, I did not answer that question because I thought it was quite uh, banal almost. Uh, but I think where I have found the parallel with the two of them um, is in fact, I think art can be looked at as a um, significant way of advancing human knowledge. So a tool for human inquiry. How do I say that? Does it mean by dancing, I am going to make a new discovery, discover a light bulb? No. But when I train my body, this is not an athletic training. This is a training where you bring body, emotion, mind in alignment, right? And this alignment is, is what trains what we call the intuitive side of the human mind. So when I do physics, I can train my analytical side, I know how to solve problems, but inspiration is not analysis, inspiration is not intellectual, right? And what we call this inspiration is not something out from the air, but it is that f absolute fine-tuning of your, all the background, that information that you have in your head, to align itself and then there is that one aha moment, right? Um, I seriously believe that if we give our children an even training in math, physics, blah, 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 and in uh, movement, I wouldn't call it movement vocabulary, but in art forms like this. It cannot just be the you know, use of the body in an external way. But if we can combine these two trainings, the ability, not the ability, the uh, pace at which we go forward in terms of uh, our understanding of the universe around us is going to be much quicker. This is perhaps what they truly did in ancient <coughs> India because if you look at education systems, everybody learned everything up to a certain age, right? And then you specialized at a much, much later point. So these separations of science, art, humanities, I think is also a modern doing. And if we can break that bridge, I think there will be a lot. So that's the idea that I'm looking into at the moment. I, I think the way I would answer that question is to say, I wish and hope, I would like to see Bhattanathan influencing our society and our thought uh, in a significant and positive way. Currently, is it? Not in any significant way. So there are two facts here. One is a historical fact. Like I mentioned to you, because the community was abolished, so on and so forth, there was a moment in Indian history where people even wanted to do away with the material. You know? Because if you are saying that, oh, you know, this is not how women should live life, and women should be married and domestic in a certain way, you are going to take this material and throw this under the carpet. Definitely happened in, in India. That is perhaps the reason why, like I said today, the material we have is only a fraction of what was really there. I think the way forward is for younger people like me who come with our own interpretation and who are able to see the material with an open mind for what it's worth is for us to take this forward in our performance, A, to not shy away from doing these pieces, right? to, to be proud about doing these pieces no matter where in the world you are and not say, oh, people will not understand this, this is, you know, so on. We make it a main part of our repertoire. And the other thing I uh, do in a personal sense is also teach to young kids and teach with, um, you know, there's, Parents will be concerned, parents are embarrassed, parents are, you know, shocked by that. It doesn't matter. I, you know, if, if somebody tells me, oh no, can you not do this and can you do something nicer and softer? I say, no, this is my dance form. So, if, the, if you want it, you get it with this whole package, otherwise not. So, yes, I'd like to see it do a lot more in, in the future. Um, and I think that is happening with the, the younger crop of people, I would, I would say. So I wanted to add one uh, other point with respect to that. Uh, the other thing that I personally do, because I think this has been a problem in recent India, uh, the way I see it, even the way I construct the material, right, um, is to 
um, spiritualize everything. I don't know if that makes sense. But essentially you say everything, oh, that's God, that's what distance between. So you acknowledge the material, but that material is not you, right? When the moment you do that, I think the art form gets stuck within the regional relevance as well. The reason why, like, um, this time uh, I'm beginning to teach, I've been teaching in Venice and over here, again, a traditional Padam. It's supposed to be on Lord Shiva, which is one of our deities, but that is irrelevant to when I teach. I said, you know, you replace that mean Shiva with John, Black, it really doesn't matter, right? So I think that's another thing I try to do, is to humanize, discover the humanity in the story. And the, the moment you say, oh, no, but Shiva is at the Nadi, it's okay, right? So it's like it's something that, that deity does, but the rest of society is disconnect from him. And that's a very common problem, I think, in the way people justify this material to themselves. Mm -hmm. which is another thing that I really try to uh, break. And I have personally found that teaching uh, people of different cultures is one thing. Teaching Indian children growing up in different cultures, who grow up very, very differently, they are really able to find that empathy if you just connect those stories with stories in their lives. And you know, but the moment for them, Krishna, Rama, Shiva doesn't mean anything. They're growing up in a very different world. And so that is something I definitely try to do.